God's word. And so please hear from the Lord tonight. Well, it is a privilege to be with you to carry miles in the gospel of Luke. Just want to go, go tonight. But before we get into something serious, I want to have a man right here, all right? Kevin, where did she find that? CD. I'm a CD player. It's the one in her purse. <laughs> Gotta have a man ball, don't you, every now and then, huh? Who, who put this, who put this uh, navigation stuff together and chose a woman's voice? <laughs> What man in his right mind can take directions from the woman? <laughs> don't, don't, don't stone me now, ladies, but it's, I mean, it's just a typical thing, isn't it? Come on now. You ladies with your husbands, when did he ever ask you directions? Only when he was lost and stuck at the end of the road and didn't have a clue where he was. That was it, wasn't it? And finally he said, do you think you know where we are? And he smiled and said, oh, I know exactly where we are. He wouldn't have been lost that's right, he wouldn't have been if he'd listen, would he? So anyhow, <clears throat> life could be fun if we wanted to be. Amen? Amen. In, the, in the book of Galatians, we're going to get to Luke, so just stick with me here tonight. In the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul says it was for freedom that Christ set us free. It's for freedom that Christ set us free. Now that freedom... I want to say it this way, it's not a freedom to do as you please, though if you are a spirit-filled, Christ-centered believer, it is the freedom to do as you please, because your pleasure is going to be the will of the Father. Does that make sense to you? So that alignment brings great freedom when your will aligns with His will, and you can say, yes, Lord, I'm listening, and you know best, and that's the way we're tracking but it's not the freedom that our culture is seeking to do as they please, no matter what the results, no matter what was right or wrong, etc., etc. But it's the freedom that we find in Christ to be who we were designed to be, created in the image of God. Remember, if chance is the author of it all, my friends, disaster is the rainbow in the sky. Isn't that a great picture? Isn't that a great picture I read to you this morning? But that man put in his, in his little soliloquy there. But it's the freedom to be who you were designed and created to be. You were created in the image of God. You were designed for fellowship and communion with Almighty God. That person revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. He is who God is. We need to know who God is through the person of Christ. We're finding out who He is in the life of Jesus Christ. But it's the freedom to be who you were designed to be. It's the freedom to live. It's the freedom to relive. A picture that our culture refuses to grasp is that when you are a, when you sin, you become a slave to sin. So Paul says in the book of Romans. That's a powerful picture. Our culture does not want to embrace that truth. They don't want to call anything sin. So they wonder why they're not free. And the reason that the individual is not free who is not walking with Christ is because they are a sinner. And they are a slave to that sin. It's an incredible bondage that only brings destruction and death, which the news media reports for you every day as often as you want to listen to it. The report on sin and selfishness every day, whether it's CNN, Fox News, whatever news you want to watch, the report on sin and selfishness every day is that it brings death. Amen? Amen. It'd be great if we got our eyes open to the culture and saw that. Jesus Christ said, I referenced it this morning in John, and the pastor just took us nearly that passage in chapter 8. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen? But in John chapter 10, Jesus said, and I believe the most important words ever spoken by anybody that ever walked on planet Earth. It's in chapter 10 of John in the 10th verse. It's a good shepherd passage. But he says this, I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest measure possible. Fill my cup with it. Amen. 
what Heather said was so true. If, you, if, if, if you haven't discovered that, then you're just empty. You're empty. I am come that you might have life and have it to the fullest measure possible. Now the word that he uses there for life is the word that the gospel writer in John tracks all through his gospel. It's not bios, B-O-S, B-I-O-S, which, which speaks of our physical existence from which we get the word biology. But it's Z-O-E. Some of you may have named your child Zoe. It's divine life. It's the life that's indigenous to God and God alone. It's the kind of life that you can't get any, you can't buy it at Walmart. You can't get it by taking pills. You, you can only get this life in relationship with God. In Him is life. In Him is Z-O-E. That's the Greek word, alright? It's divine and it's deathless and it's eternal and it's life-giving. It's life-giving. A lesson that you probably have learned this, at this point in life, I hope you've learned it, uh, is that the stuff of this world doesn't bring life to you. You can buy the most expensive car. You can go out and buy a McLaren. I think they're three, 1.3 million, something like that. I don't know if I can slide and can afford one. You can go out and buy yourself a McLaren, but the problem is there's there's a lot of acceleration in that. But that thing doesn't produce life. In other words, you got to use your life and your energy to keep it running. Your ten thousand dollar a month car payments would really tax you with it. And all the stuff that you and I gather around us in this world, I'm not saying it's wrong. But please don't expect it to bring you life. It can't. It sucks the life out of us. It's not life-giving. It was never designed to be life-giving. So Jesus said, those types of treasures, moth corrupt, rust corrupts, and I'm back here in the Midwest, rust belt, I see all that hanging off your poor cars. <laughs> Down there in West Texas and the southern part of the United States, you don't get that stuff, see? All that stuff, he says, that's what thieves can see. And when it's all said and done, it all goes back in the box, and then it gets in the box with you, doesn't it? Everybody all right with that picture tonight? Because it doesn't have life in it. If we would learn that. See, Jesus says in some amount that the pagans run after that stuff. That's the word that's used. They, they chase it. They're running after you. Say, why are they running after John? Because they're looking for life. And the advertising agencies are telling them that that life can be found in the newest iPhone. <clears throat> Who would have ever thought huh? <laughs> that that thing would be so meaningful? And so we listen to that voice and we get into the pagan race, it's called the rat race, and we start chasing after this stuff and it just sucks the life out of us. It has no life in it. That car, that new car, feels good and all that, smells good for a while, and you're working hard to make the payments and put gas in and pay insurance on and the whole time you're doing that, it's depreciating in a rate that you can't even imagine, and then the kids puke in the vaccine. <laughs> and it smells just like the old car. <laughs> it ain't any different, is it? See? Because it doesn't have any life in it. If we would learn that lesson, if we would hear what Christ's word is telling us, blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of the ungodly. Just go to Psalm chapter 1. Be like the tree that is planted by the water. That tree doesn't sweat and work and shed its bark trying to make it, does it? It just draws the nutrients. It's planted by streams of water. Your pastor referenced that. And that life that Jesus Christ said, I, that's why I have come. To, that's why I've come. I didn't come to smack you over the head. I didn't come to pull my finger at you, Jesus. Said, 
sins and I become that you might have this life. And you can't find it anywhere else. I'm it, Jesus says. I'm that life. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Huh? Those are the most important words ever spoken on planet Earth. And we need to be sharing those words. We need to be sharing those words. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus introduces for us another picture of this life. And this whole concept of life and freedom is couched in an Old Testament word, jubilee. Now, if you don't know anything about the Old Testament, that's all okay. okay. Let me just explain something to you. In the Old Testament, God Almighty gathered a group of people to Himself, called them Israel, the Israelites. And He started all that through their great, 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 great grandfather Abraham. And He said, I'm going to use you for a special purpose. And He says, through you, I'm going to let the rest of the nations know that I am the true and the living God. I am the holy God. And that was their job. It was their job to be light to the Gentiles. And they dropped the ball. They? they got into their little exclusive club. And, oh, it's all about us. God loves us. He doesn't love anybody else. And we're His special chosen ones. And they dropped the ball on the job. God wanted them to get they would be a light to the Gentiles. They would be an illustration of a holy people, a royal priesthood, that special people that belong to the true and the living God, distinctly different from all the other nations on planet Earth. It's an interesting story. And God laid down all these guidelines for the people of Israel. They were a theocracy. They were God ruled. They didn't have a parliament. They didn't have a president. They didn't have a congress. Man, what a deal, huh? None of that. They were to listen to God and follow Him. And as time went on, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but let me just interject this. As time went on, a very sad thing took place in the history of Israel. They decided they wanted to be like everybody. They said, we want a king so we can be like all the other nations. And then that king will lead us into battle. I think I'd rather have Almighty God lead me into battle, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. And it fell apart even farther after that, and that's another whole picture. But in all of God's system and, and all of God's protocol for His people, Israel, every seven years was a special time. And every 50 years was a very, very special time. And every 50 years was known as the year of the Jubilee. It was all about freedom and life. It was all about a second chance. It was all about a fresh start. And you can read about it in the book of Leviticus and a couple other places in the Old Testament. And every 50 years, land was be, to be returned and debts were to be canceled, and slaves were be, to be set free. And when I say slaves, don't get in your mind the picture of American slavery because it was a totally different picture, more of a servanthood, working underneath the mantle of somebody for a living and trying to pay back type of things and buy your own freedom. Don't get the negative, negative picture of American slavery in your mind when I use that word. But it was a time for freedom it was a time for life. It was a time for a new start. Wouldn't you have looked forward to the Jubilee year? Especially if you were one of the little guys who lost the land and was working to try to pay back debts. Wouldn't it have been great to wake up on Monday and it was Jubilee Monday? <laughs> And your debts were canceled. And you could move back in the home place and try it again. Huh? Wouldn't that be great? You say, well, I sure wouldn't work in America. That's right. It wasn't designed to work anywhere else. 
It was only designed to work in Israel with God being in control. They weren't trying to amass wealth for themselves. It wasn't a capitalistic structure. In fact, it was a total different structure that we have no comprehension of in materialistic, capitalistic, free enterprise America. All right? So don't try to blare it and make comparisons because it doesn't work. But there is a jubilee for you and me right now. I am come that you might have life. It was for freedom that Christ set you free. In the book of Luke, way back there when they announced the coming of the birth of Jesus, it says he will set us free from the hand of our enemies. Now they interpret that as wrong. But there's a greater enemy, isn't there? And that's the shackle of sin and selfishness. And he says he will set us free from our enemies that we might serve him in righteousness and holiness and without fear all the days of our life. And one thing that mankind needs to be free from as much as anything is fear. Fear. Perfect love of God for us is to cast out that fear. Fear not. Somebody told me there were 365 fear knots in God's word. I never took time to count them. One for every day. Isn't that quite a promise? Fear not. So Jesus shows up on the scene. If you have your Bibles, in Luke chapter 4, and he talks to us about a mindset that we need to develop and a heart condition that we need to nurture and an attitude that we need to pursue here and a liberty that we need to embrace. And it's all set in this picture of Jubilee. Now, Jesus doesn't use the word Jubilee, but every Jewish ear that hears Jesus make this proclamation knows what he's talking about. And it's a quotation out of the book of Isaiah. And remember, Isaiah was written and delivered to Israel when Israel was in Babylonian captivity. It was post 587. And if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Don't let me, I'm not trying to be smart on you here tonight. But 587 was a defining year in Israel's history. And God basically said, I'm done. Kick you out. Well, I am done messing with you. But in the midst of it, God in His mercy and His compassion and His patience, aren't you glad He's patient with you? Yeah. Yeah. Realize that these are my people. <laughs> and i got to help them. And even though in a lot of ways He was done with them in 587, the prophet Isaiah said that there is one coming. And there is hope for my people, not as a nation. Don't get caught up in the nation picture, but as individual worshipers. To know me and to know the jubilee that I can bring to them. So Paul, one of the great Jews, later on announces that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Gentile. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither Greek nor Scythian. There's neither male nor female. But all are one in Christ. All can have the Jubilee. Amen. Even if the Roman Empire is sitting on top of you like a millstone around your neck. And that's how the Jews felt about the Roman oppression of the Roman Empire. See, that's how they felt. Even when life is a weight around your neck. You can be free. You can rejoice. You can be alive from the inside out with a life that all the world can't squish out of you. That makes sense to you? And that's salvation, my friends. That's the great gospel of Jesus Christ. It's so much more than just having our sins washed away and our name adopted in the family of God and making it to heaven. See, that's, that's all very important, but it's it's almost the minimal side of it in this life. In this journey right here. In this wretched journey right here. Christ wants to gift you and me daily with Jubilee. That's why I say it's a mindset that we need to nurture in the church. Too much oppression. Too much bondage. 
too much darkness, too much fear. I've been in a lot of churches, my friends, and I would honestly say that we're more comfortable at funerals than we are at the celebration of the resurrection. Everybody okay? I'm not throwing stones. I'm just talking to us tonight. See? We've established a routine that is so minuscule of what God wants to give. One of your five points, expectation. The great old great writer from the 60s and 50s was A.W. Tozer. He said, he wrote this in the 60s. He said, the problem with the church in America is that they've settled into the routine. And the routine turns into a rut. And the rut turns into a rot. And then he says, the biggest problem with that is that we, in the church, allow the, level, the routine to establish our level of expectation. This is the Almighty God that sets the prisoner free. Right. This is the Almighty God that came that we might have ZOE yeah. to the fullest measure possible. Yeah. This is the Almighty God that says, yes, in this world, you're going to have all kinds of tribulations and trials, but what? Be of good, be jubilee. That's what he's talking here. When he gives those promises, it's all connected to Jubilee. Amen. It's all connected to the joy of the Lord that shall be our strength. Hear me now, church. Come on now. We forfeited this. We wallow around in the down and the out. And oh, help us. See, who wants that? Our world's chasing after for Jubilee. And it in the iPhone. And it isn't the newest car. And it isn't this and that and better this and that. But that's all they know to chase after. Oh, that they would see in us what the heathen, the other nations, were to see in Israel. And that's the joy and the rejoicing of the Lord. Oh, the Almighty God established for Israel. They had to get together so many times a year just to party. That's what those festivals were. They weren't funeral dirges. They were parties. They sang and they drank and, excuse me, they danced. I'm not advocating drinking and dancing. That's not, but they partied. They celebrated what? How good God had been to them. They celebrated what God had done for them in the Exodus. Don't forget that, God said. And so you won't forget it once a year, get together and have the party of parties to celebrate the Exodus. I'm sorry, I'm messing with you a little bit tonight, aren't we? We have sat down so long, we've gotten so small, and we've lost the joy of the Lord, and we're not living in Jubilee. Come on, church. It ought to be part of the magnet that attracts the program. Yes. The world parties hard. They never get any joy out of it. It's very passive. They sing all kinds of songs, but they don't have a song that comes from the heart. And I'm not throwing stones. I'm talking about people that I love and care about that I'm praying for now and loving on and working on to try to get them to Jubilee. Try to get them to see that Jesus came and He is that party they're looking for. He's that life that they can't find chasing after anything else. And some of these precious ones that I'm dealing with have been chasing stuff for a long time. Come on, church. So Jesus, He's full of the Holy Spirit. He returns from the Jordan after His baptism. He's led in the Spirit, etc. He goes through His temptation. But then in verse, oh, this look at verse 16. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, it was the church house for the Jews, as was his custom. He'd grown up doing that. He was a Jew. He'd grown up doing that. And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and unfolding it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. That's where it starts right there. The 
That's Him. He's the anointed Messiah. That's what that means. He's the Son. He's the firstborn for all creation. He's the one that all the Jews have been waiting for for thousands of years. And not only the Jews, but the Gentile world was looking for this guy too. Because only in him is life. Amen. Amen. Come on now. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. And some of them are looking at him and think, I know who his brother and sister are. I can't be. I had him in first grade Sunday school class. Wow. He, he, he no spirit on him. <laughs> the spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach, proclaim the good news. The good news. In the brokenness of our world. The good news. The good news. To preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Recovery of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's the jubilee that I've been talking to you about. The year of the Lord's favor. And the good news of the new covenant, my friends, is every day is jubilee. Today is the day of salvation, Paul said to the Corinthian church. It's, it's today. You, you don't have to wait 49 more years. See? You don't have to wait until next year when we celebrate Pentecost again. It's, it's in the new covenant. It's, it's every day is the day of salvation. In the new covenant, the blood of Christ and the person of Christ every day is you wake up to jubilee every day. That's why Paul says you can give thanks in all circumstances. That's God's will for you in Christ. Why? Because I'm free today. I'm alive today. It's jubilee today. Rejoice in the Lord always. Why? Because it's jubilee. All this fits together into this powerful picture of what God wants to pour into our hearts. And so the fruit of the Holy Spirit in His love and 
raised to bless you with today. The second question is this, captive, proclaim freedom for the prisoners. What are you dragging with you that you need to let go? You're a prisoner to you, Your wagon's full of rocks and you're dragging it with you. It's all uphill in the wind. That precious lady that Jesus encountered, John chapter 4, your pastor alluded to. She was dragging a wagon ball of trash with her. You talk about a messed up loser. She'd been married five times. She was living with a guy that wasn't her husband, because why would you get married a sixth time? Come on now. Think about it, all right? She had every negative label culture could hang on her, hanging on her. You see the new commercial with Verizon and they're sticking stickers on everybody. Well, she had every negative sticker on her that she could stick on. She was a Samaritan, she was a woman, she was a five time married to losers. Come on now. What are you dragging with you? Release from shame? Oh, my God's good people. And forgiven, they know it, but the shame of the days gone by. Like a sack of rocks hanging in the back. What are you dragging with your guilt? A habit? By the time you think you get victory, and then it just snags you again. Recovery of sight for the blind. Where do you need wisdom? Understanding so you can move forward in the journey with Christ and be a proper working part of His body. Wisdom and knowledge from the Lord above so we can keep moving forward and running the race. Amen? And finally, release the oppressed, the downtrodden. It speaks of pressure, it speaks of stress on this person, it speaks of a battle that's raging within the spirit of this individual, within their mind. It might be an addiction, it might be unresolved anger or bitterness. On and on the list can go. But you're oppressed. You're oppressed with it. There's no freedom in your journey. And that oppression, that oppression, hear me, I'm not saying people aren't saved. But they don't love the Lord, but there still can be stuff in your life from your past that's, that's sitting on you and oppressing you. And it evidences itself in anger. On and on and on. Where are you tonight? Two thoughts, and I'm going to quit. Way back there, take the Old Testament again. It's in Jubilee, and for freedom, Christ set us free, all right? Moses went to Pharaoh, and God's message was what? Let my people go free. You don't have to set them free, Pharaoh. You can do it the way you want, or I'll do it the way I want, buddy, but it's going to get done. He wants us to free. Let my people go. And not only has Jesus shouted that in Satan's face, but he has rubbed Satan's face in it. And Christ holds the keys today and all power and all authority in heaven and earth are in his name to let the people go. To set us free. It's there. New covenant. Israelites didn't have that in the Old Testament. The second picture is Revelation 22. It's the ultimate jubilee. There will be no more curse. <laughs> you wonder why people do what they do and why this world is so full of sin and selfishness and darkness and, hate, darkness and hatred and prejudice, etc., etc., etc. It's the curse, folks. The curse of sin and death. It enslaves mankind. The ultimate final jubilee. There'll be no more curse. The former things are gone and made all things new. Wow. 
What a jubilee. What a celebration that will be for eternity with the Lord. Amen. So where are you in it tonight? It was for freedom. The Lord wants to bless you with His jubilee moment by moment, day by day. It's yours. You don't have to beg for it. It's a gift. It's, it's what He wants you to have. He's trying to give it to us. <laughs> and we say, oh, you know, whatever. He, he wants to bless us with that. That's, that's it. That's the gift He gives us. Amen. Stay with me, please, tonight. Father in heaven, thank you for your word and the richness of it. Thank you for who you are. As the true and living God, thank you that you have shown yourself to us in the person of Jesus Christ and what a beautiful picture that is. We just take all your promises tonight, Lord, that you want to bring us that life to the fullest as you possible. Not just something post death, but it's for Monday, and it's for Tuesday. And it's for every day that we journey in this old broken world. Forgive us for not being filled with your jubilee. Tonight, Lord, somebody's here. But they need that presence to move upon them and free them and lift them and heal them. Enable them to be what you desire them to be. We wait before you, Lord. Right where you are, you can pray, or you can come here this evening and pray around the front street. That's your choice. But if the Lord is speaking to you, don't walk away from the moment.